All right, you guys, welcome back to another tutorial here on my channel. And in today's episode, we're gonna build this super cute and tiny little house behind me. Now this house, as with most of my builds, was directly inspired by Fallout 4. I believe it's Fallout 4. Where, um, is it Fallout 4? It's gotta be Fallout 4. Where you're in the Commonwealth of the US near Boston, I think it is. And they have like these little blue 70s, is it 70s? I don't know. It's like, they had like the main community that you start out with. It was like these blue houses, standard two bedroom, one bath type of starter house thingy. You know what I mean? And on top of that, I wanted it to be that type of blue looking kind of mid-century-esque, as well as similar enough to almost like a trailer park type of thing, like a mobile home. So I, I'm gonna go ahead and put up some pictures right now that directly influenced this design and this build, so you can see what I mean, hopefully, with it being mid-century-esque, kind of like Fallout, and like a little mobile home to boot. And so here is a list of the materials needed for this exact build. You need 173 dark prismarine slabs, 115 striped warped hyphae, which is basically that warped wood in the nether, 66 quartz sla smooth quartz slabs, although you could easily do the regular quartz as well, 55 end rods, 41 quartz pillars, 33 black stained glass, 21 white stained glass, although you could always change out the colors of the glass very easily, so I wouldn't even stick to this too much. 11 smooth quartz stairs, uh, two black stained glass blocks, two iron trap doors, and one single birch fence. Pretty simple in terms of materials and palette, so let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial. And if you do enjoy my tutorials, please make sure you leave a like, and I'll see you in just a second. Also, I'm sorry if you hear background noise, my AC is on because it's hot and it's summer. But without further ado to get started on this, we're gonna start by building two blocks, leaving a two block gap for our doorway, and one block here. So our main entranceway, as you can see, is five blocks wide, including the door frame. Then we're gonna turn and come out four more blocks of these standing up quartz pillars, basically. So we have a five block wall total, including this corner. Then we're gonna turn again. We're not gonna have a block here. You can if you want, but it's unnecessary. And we're gonna start here and put another five all together until you have a five and a five. Then you turn, and this side is going to be seven blocks, including this corner here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's actually nine, so you go to nine. And then you turn again, and you're going to bring this side here all the way down until it lines up with that first pillar there. And then bring them pillars all the way down to match back up with it. So essentially, we have a five, a five, a five, a seven, then a ten and a 14 here and essentially it should all look like this rather simple little p <laughs> big p <laughs> next up we're going to work on the door the door itself is very simple similar to a lot of my designs you're going to have these three glass panes here in line with the quartz pillar two of them will come forward as the door is opened and then a birch fence there above it we're going to go ahead and place iron trap doors on top on top of the glass and over and then behind it we're gonna put two full glass blocks like so and that is your whole door frame now for the first wall we're gonna build here is striped warped wood and it's gonna go up three blocks until it's in line with the glass here on top of the glass we're gonna do another two warped blocks just because the roof goes at this gentle slope up and then finally on this last pillar here we're gonna go up one block taller so you can see how the roof is gonna slope up like that just kidding, this block is unnecessary. <laughs> like that. So in both of these 5x5 five five walls here, we're going to have a 2x3 windows in the middle. You're going to line the bottom here with the stripped warped wood. Then we're going to go up one on both si on all the sides like that. And you're going to go up again. That's going to be the glass in the middle. And finally, on this top one here, up to you if you want to do like the logs like that so that they have the... the lines going horizontally but i prefer them to look vertically so i'm just going to do temp blocks real quick as i put them in the way that i want until you get something like that then the glass for these windows i did a very simple little pattern where i did like two pieces of one color on the bottom two pieces of the other color on top and then one piece on the corner just so it looks again trying to go for that mid-century type of feel and then on this 
uh, second five by five. This side is done. This one we're gonna go up again because the roof is still sloping up higher. So it's gonna go up here, another full row of blocks. That one corner is not necessary because that's where the roof is gonna be, hence this that wall being at this height as well. But the rest of this is needed. Now for this other corner here, it's also gonna go up the same height as that corner, which is five blocks tall. And then at first, we're gonna go ahead and build a window here. It's gonna be four, it's gonna be three by four, I should say. So let's go ahead and just kind of throw something in here like that. Then again, we're gonna frame it with the striped warped wood all around, just until it meets up with the top edges there. Then here, I went ahead and did another two by three. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And then frame the bottom out with the rest of the striped warped wood until you have a wall that looks like that. On the back here, I immediately started off with a two by four, so four blocks tall and two blocks wide type of window, like that. And then went ahead and framed around it, like so. Then I went ahead and did another full column here of striped warped wood. And on this side, you can do all the way over by one. Sorry, by two columns, basically two rows, sorry, of warped wood. Then I did another two by three sized window here. Like that. Now with this wall, this corner is actually not needed. That, my bad, this window should actually be down by one until it looks like that. And with the wall, we have it coming down here to match that column there. And then we're gonna go ahead and bring it over to frame this window. And again, we want it to match that column that it's in front of, because that's the slope of the roof is gonna go that same direction. So here is all this size, because it matches up with those rows there, and then, or those columns there, and then this one goes down another one for these guys here. And finally on this last wall, you can go ahead and just bring it up all by three blocks tall. And I went ahead and included some little like sneaky peeky windows like this, very small type of windows, just a one by three. You could change it up obviously however you'd like and do windows however you'd like or use whatever materials you'd like. This is all, like I've said before, just meant for your inspiration. So to start the roof off, we're gonna come to this first corner that we built here. This is a temporary block and then we're gonna move it over. So we want the first corner of this roof to be on the top half portion of this block moved over by one. We're gonna stick it out again and then bring it all the way down until the very end using our smooth quartz slabs until it meets back up here. Now, most of it's going to be on the same level. However, we do have the end rods on the corners for some added detail. The end rods cannot nicely hit up with this slab because it's on the top half of a slab. So on this corner here where we're going to put the end rods, we're going to go ahead and go up half a slab like so. Oh, I should actually say we're going to go up half a slab, but it's going to be with prismarine, dark prismarine slabs. Like that. And same thing on this corner here. Then to connect it up, you can just take the dark prismarine slab all the way down until you have your first line like that. Now for the next portion of this slope, that's a temporary block, we're gonna go up by half a slab with two, half a slab again with two of them, and then half a slab again with two of them like so. Now this one is gonna be carried all the way over to this corner, and then it's gonna go up again another half slab by two, and then another half slab by two. And finally, this one's a little a little weird because of the way that I wanted it to look as an overhang. This one is up, but it's gonna have a stair here. Nope, it needs to come forward by one. It's gonna have a stair forward by one. So you're gonna go up the tube like we've been doing and then a stair, and then we're gonna have one extra sticking out like that. And you're gonna bring this overhang all the way down to the edge of this wall until it overhangs by one like we've been doing. And of course, bring around the slabs as well. And you should have something that looks like this. For the back here, we're gonna just copy the, the slope we've been doing. So again, up half a slab by two, 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 and up half a slab by two. And you have it all connected up with your outline already. Now to fill it in, basically you want the dark prismarine to be up half a slab, from every from the white outline so that it sticks out a little bit and has a little depth and interest to it as well as a color change until you fill in the entirety of this roof. 
And finally on this top one here, again, we're gonna have it go on top of the quartz slabs, the quartz stairs that are upside down, so that we have this entire roof with only a single block outline worth of quartz around it that you can see from the top. And then finally for the finishing touches, the end rods that we had everywhere, trying to make it look like metal support beams basically for the roof, kind of like mid-century homes tend to have. They had a lot of like, uh, wrought iron work and detail work for their porches and stuff so again it's meant to look like that slash kind of trailer-esque and these end rods give additional light too so it is a little easier to see if you're doing this in survival and basically i'm just doing it on every edge of the corner here that this house has any corners that i can find i will go ahead and place an end rod all the way up to the roof line as a so and this one as well here and then there you go, you got your simple little trailer-esque mid-century small home. Well, I hope you guys did enjoy this tutorial. If you did, make sure you leave a like down below, comment if you have anything like to comment, and subscribe if you're new, because it really does help out my channel. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, bye guys!